The time is now 7.06 and I'm reconvening to open session and calling to order the final regular board meeting of 2018-19 through the Indian Prairie School District 204 Board of Education on the date Monday, April 29th, 2019. Jackie, will you please call the roll? Ms. Donahue? Here. Ms. Grover? Here. Ms. Deming? Present. Mr. Rising? Here. Ms. Peel? Here. Mr. Rasak? Here. Mr. Karubas? Here. We are all here. Um, Ms. Donahue, will you lead us in the pledge? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> we have several board salutes today. I'm going to ask Ms. Grover to start us. The board salutes two District 204 high school seniors who were recently named the 2019 National Merit Corporate Scholars by the National Merit Scholarship Corporation. The scholars are Mihir Rao from Wabanzi Valley and Eric Shu from Nikwa Valley. These scholars were chosen from more than 15,000 finalists and selected by college admissions officers and high school counselors who reviewed a substantial amount of information submitted by both the finalists and their high schools. Congratulations to Mihir and Eric on their selection for this prestigious award. Thank you. Mr. Rising? Absolutely. The Naperville Daughters of um, the American Revolution chapter recently held its awards ceremony, which include honoring students for outstanding work in American history. Matia Valley senior Samantha Pittman won the Vera Walls Education Scholarship. In addition, this year honorees for the Good Citizen Award include Laura Kluge, my neighbor, uh, from Matia Valley, and Adam Schneid from Nequa Valley. To receive this award, high school seniors must demonstrate qualities of dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism in their homes, schools, and communities. Jonathan Truhoft, an eighth grader from Fisher Middle School, was also recognized for his outstanding studies in American history. Congratulations to all. Thank you. I think Ms. Donahue. The board salutes Nikwa Valley Jr. Arna Bedai, who recently received Governor J.B. Pritzker's 2019 Volunteer Service Award. Arnav started PowerMinds.org, a nonprofit organization that provides free online tutoring and free homework help with the intent of enabling deserving youth and adults to achieve their educational goals. Since its launch around a year ago, Arnav has signed up more than 100 volunteers to tutor online in a wide range of subjects. Numerous deserving kids have taken advantage and benefited from the tutoring services that PowerMinds.org provides. Arnav is changing lives and enabling deserving kids who cannot afford tutoring services to succeed and excel in their studies. Congratulations, Arnav. Thank you. And Ms. Dunning. Step, stu Step Student to Receive Community Award. The board salutes STEP student Jackson Mayer, who will receive a Naperville Accessible Community Task Force Award at an upcoming Naperville City Council meeting. One student from the District 204 Transition Program was chosen for this award. Jackson was selected for the attitude he fosters in respecting and valuing people with disabilities. Jackson will receive his award from the Mayor and City Council members on May 7th. Congratulations, Jackson. Great, thank you. Now we move to our student representative report today. It's from Wabonte Valley High School. We have Sam Jordan with us. Hey, Sam, how you doing? So, Sam, are you a senior? Yes, I am. And what, what are your plans after graduation? Um, I'm going to the Ohio State University next or in the fall um, to study accounting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your service to us, too. Yeah, no problem. I'm happy year. to do it. I'll let you go. <laughs> All right. So in athletics, uh, the Booster Club will be hosting its annual golf outing on Tuesday, June 4th at the White Eagle Country Club. Uh, Boys, track, um, Boys Track's annual red ribbon track meet was a success over the weekend. Boys Tennis were the champions at the Schaumburg Invite on Saturday, April 13th. Girls Soccer were the champions of the Plainfield North Invite. And then in activities this past weekend, we saw amazing attendance at our spring musical, The Wedding Singer. 
There were over 110 students involved in the show, so big shout out to the cast, crew, and amazing directors. The competition season for clubs and activities has been in full effect since March. BPA Nationals sends over 40 students to Anaheim this Wednesday. FCCLA had 21 state participants, many of them placing, and overall Wabonzi will be sending over 150 students to state and national competitions. May 13th and 14th saw 445 seniors participate in the Senior Celebration event, which is one of the biggest, most memorable, memorable events of their high school career. Over 150 parents come together to provide this experience, and the seniors report having had a wonderful time, and I personally can say that that is true. Um, in academics, AP testing begins on May 6th, where Wabonzi will have over 600 students taking over 1,000 exams during the College Board prescribed testing times. Recently, Wabonzi's, or or Wabonzi Wabonzi's Aurora School Resource Officer Nick Gardner was recognized today, April 29th, with the Medal of Valor by the APD for his actions of courage involving the Henry Pratt mass shooting incident. The Illinois School Health Association recently recognized Millie Shepich, a health teacher at Wabonzi Valley for 33 years who is retiring this year with the Lifetime, Ach Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is extra special as Wabonzi Valley recently received the Blue Ribbon Award for Health Education. On upcoming events, Young Hearts for Life will be scanning our warriors this Thursday, May 2nd. At current, we have 1,700 students signed up and we're looking to beat our current top total of 1,911 students scanned. The Green and Gold Ceremony takes place on May 8th at 7 p.m. We invite all board members to attend if it fits your schedule. Close to 75 senior students will be recognized with departmental awards and community scholarships. Senior Brunch and Baccalaureate happen on May 22nd. Brunch is at Two Brothers Roundhouse, and it's our seniors' last opportunity to get together as a class. And Baccalaureate happens at 7 p.m. in the Wabonzi Valley Auditorium on the 22nd, and we invite the board to join us to that as well if your schedule permits. And as this is my last report of the school year, I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to represent the original Valley and say one last, once a warrior, always a warrior. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Stipp. Thanks, Mr. Stepp. <coughs> it is now time for public comment for non-agenda items. If you are here to speak to an agenda item, that comment will be taken immediately prior to that item. 30 minutes is allowed for public comment, and each person is limited to three minutes. When addressing the board, we ask that you respect the confidentiality and safety of our students and school district personnel. We ask those that are addressing the board be cognizant that this is an open meeting and is available to all age groups. And as such, ask that you consider who the audience members are this evening and keep comments age appropriate. Public comment represents the voice and opinion of the speaker. There will be no feedback from board members during the meeting, but follow-up will be provided by an administrator as appropriate. We have four speakers to non-agenda items. The first is Ms. Michelle Metry. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle Metry, and I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of our District 204 Lacrosse community and families, both boys and girls teams, many of whom could not join us tonight as they're currently competing in lacrosse contests around the earth. Well, some of them are. Those that are playing on turf are still playing. Um, I came to this forum two years ago to request support for the district for the funding of the fast-growing sport of boys and girls lacrosse. I would like to start by expressing my most sincere gratitude for your collaboration with the athletics community and more specifically the lacrosse community in bringing lacrosse into our district. We appreciate that you and many members of the administration heard from and listened to our parents, community members, and student athletes during the open forums last time and that you approved lacrosse as an interscholastic sport. At that time, the lacrosse advocacy, advocacy community, parents and athletes, offered to collaborate with a two-year parent funding plan as we all saw the value in bringing forward this incredible sport. In addition, back in May 2017, the board agreed to reevaluate the parent funding model at the end of the two years. We, respect we respectfully ask of the board that after having parent funding of the startup cost for the sport for the first two years, the board now move to recommend or consider approval of transi and transition to a school-funded sport ongoing. 
Over the past two years, and specifically this year, we thank you most sincerely for affording 31 Neuqua Valley girls, 50 Neuqua Valley boys, 35 Valley co-op boys, and 45, pardon me, 45 Valley co-op girls the opportunity to play this season. However, we have lost many interested athletes to the cost barrier. As an example, the Girls Lacrosse Program at Neuqua Valley this year conducted their player interest meeting earlier in the year, where we had 51 players attend. This was prior to the announcement of the annual cost to play. So, when the $690 fee was announced for the girls this season, we immediately lost 20 players, 20 interested players, as it was just too expensive for them to play. We ended with 31 players. Similarly, our peers at Valley, at Valley Co-op spoke here earlier, I believe this year, regarding the inequity in funding of the sport and hence the loss of additional players. Neuqua Valley, girls has two subs in their varsity team compared to 13 at Naperville North and 9 or 10 at Naperville Central. So when we play, we're playing on fairly thin ice because our sidelines don't have very many extra girls to play. As you, have all, as you all have seen over the past several years, we very strongly believe in supporting our children in their desire to participate in lacrosse and to represent and play for their school. The lacrosse community is coming forward now to request that lacrosse athletes within the district within District 204, receive school funding going forward and receive equal treatment as athletes representing the district. We believe that the sport could continue to grow even stronger if the funding model were more equitable. On behalf of all the families that, we, that will be impacted by your impending decisions, as you thoughtfully discuss and consider the forthcoming year, we, the lacrosse community, again thank you for your time, for the time you have taken and the time you will take to thoughtfully discern, discern equitably funding lacrosse within the district. Thank, Thank you. you. Next speaker is Derek Karma. Welcome. The wearing of this attire was because I thought I had a game tonight at 7. It had nothing to do with what I'm about to talk about tonight. <laughs> Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Derek Harmer, and I'm uh, currently a, a parent of three boys, and all three boys play lacrosse. I have two at the, in the program now at Neuqua Valley, and I have uh, another one who graduated in 2017. It's, to say that it's become cultural to our family is an understatement. Uh, I was a football coach for many years and a uh, soccer coach and done all the things that parents do with their children, right? And we were moving along, and all of a sudden, my son came home from school one day and said, Hey, Dad, it was in fourth grade. How about this sport where I get to run around chasing people with a stick? And I said, well, let's do that, right? That sounds like fun, right? So a little anecdotal history about, about the sport, how it kind of took hold in our family. So I've been involved with the lacrosse community here in Naperville since uh, 2012 we moved here. And I've been on the lacrosse board as a volunteer uh, board member and predominantly been in charge of fields and scheduling and watching this kind of evolve over the last couple of years and how we were not a not a school recognized sport at one time and now we are and we, we thank you for your support of that of that part of our mission and secondarily kind of watching as this is, is rolled itself out um, watching player interest and and family interest in the sport and and being disappointed that i've heard on multiple occasions to to michelle's point families of freshman athletes that are coming into school wanting to try this as a new sport similarly to to uh, michelle's earlier um earlier example when they see the cost of getting into the sport, if you've not played it before and you're not accustomed to club fees and kind of doing that sort of, uh, it's not part of your family, coming in and having that be your, your, your entry fee into the sport or something you might want to try is, is terribly discouraging. I remember when I was a young man, much younger than I am today, I went and told my parents I wanted to try wrestling. And I was a freshman, and, and, and I said, I want to try wrestling. And they said, how much is it to do? And I said, well, i got to go get a singlet, i got to get some shoes, i got this and that, and I want to try it. And I asked my mother, and I said, Mom, if I would have told you it would have cost five times or four to five times as much as the normal fee for trying wrestling, what would you have said? She would you weren't going to wrestle, right? And so as I see our program now, you know, we had 80-some kids in our, in our men's program for, for, for the last couple of years. We've gone down to 70. Now we're down to, now we're down to just 53. And, and you hear from, and we go, and I go to every parent meeting. We start the parent meetings, every introductory meeting every year as a board member and as a, as a concerned parent. And I see kids, new kids, new fresh faces that are going to be refreshing the team, you know, in the, in the coming years. And to see those numbers falling off, and one of the predominant reasons why is because the cost of entry is disappointing. And so we didn't even have a freshman uh, team this year as part of our boys program. 
we had, our, we had to take our numbers and combine them to both the JV and a varsity program. So it's impacting the growth of the sport, like Michelle had mentioned. It's a fast growing sport. I think it's one of the few sports the last five years that's had double digit growth every year. And that, that was a statistic reported by the uh, sports, Sporting Good Manufacturers of America. So I'll end with this. Uh, it, it, nothing like playing for your high school, nothing like being able to try new things as a, as, as a young student, a young student athlete. And we would, we would ask to, um, to you respectfully request our, our, our expect, respectfully request that you um, uh, consider um, expediting our equal treatment for lacrosse in our high school. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, I'm going to try to do this right, Lauren Charbonisi. Okay, I, it's my 67-year-old eyes. <laughs> and it's a tough name, too. So. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, my name is Lauren Charbonneau. I, um, I'm a parent here in the district. And as Derek said, um, uh, uh, I've got a son who plays uh, lacrosse at Nequa Valley High School. And um, I've been a coach. I've coached soccer. I've coached baseball. I've coached, you know, uh, basketball. And like like Derek's son, um, he came to me one day and said, I want to play lacrosse. And I said, what's lacrosse? I kind of knew what it was, but I wanted him to explain it to me. And it was the one thing that he became passionate about, you know, right away. And not only did he take it seriously, but because there's this uh, correlation between lacrosse and highly academic um, uh, uh, success, his grades went up. And I felt like that was a real positive influence on him. Um, as both Michelle and Derek said, why we're here, we're really here to expedite the equal treatment of lacrosse in District 204. Um, the parent-funded program, had, as, as you all know, was a two-year program. And we are ready now to um, be part of the school district and part of that whole community that without the um, uh, parent-funded program. Um, lacrosse is the fastest growing sport in America. This is, it's, the ti it's time now to be part of that program. Otherwise, um, we're going to really miss that, that boat. We're really going to miss the, the opportunity to continue to grow the sport in this particular area. Uh, District 203 um, uh, approved that sport uh, two or three years ago. I'm not quite sure of the facts. And, They've, they've done a nice job of continuing to grow that sport in that particular area. Um, you know, this coming summer, a professional lacrosse league is, uh, has put together a, uh, a deal with NBC to televise, televise the sports. This past weekend, a high school uh, showcase tournament was on ESPN. This sport is growing exponentially, and we really need to uh, take it upon ourselves to uh, – allow District 204 to fund this program moving forward. Um, you know, we're losing players. We don't want to do that. Uh, and it's, it's, it's something that a lot of us feel very passionate about. And, and I, I really strongly suggest that we, we consider this as, as, as part of our plan moving forward. Um, you know, I have a 12-year-old boy. Um, he likes the cross, but he's not passionate about it. But fast forward two, three, four years, He's a freshman. All of a sudden, he's like, Dad, I want to try lacrosse. If it's, if it's not school funded, I may not let him do that just out of principle. It's, it, it's time. It's really time to do it. Again, um, we really encourage the expedite of the equal treatment of lacrosse. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, last speaker, Dave Wentz. Hi, Dave. Dr. Sullivan, President Rizek, my name is David Wentz. Uh, thank you for listening to all of us tonight. Uh, two years ago, uh, I stood here with several other concerned parents and a number of, of players in, in the audience and passionately requested that we would be recognized as a state school or as a, as a, as a school sport through, through your uh, decision. Uh, as part of that opportunity, we also had an agreement in place we signed a pledge. We signed a pledge that for the two years time period, we would pay all in. We had a lot of parents who said that's a bitter pill for us to swallow. We didn't want to take that time. There was a lot of, lot of parents who really 
took that as, as, a, as a tough opportunity. Uh, what we learned the first year was, was the, and I'll say by background, my, my son Zach plays uh, at Matia Valley, uh, Wabanzi Valley Combined School. Uh, we found out the first year that we lost five players that were, were going to be signing up uh, for Matia and Wabanzi that did not participate. This year, there were seven players that, that did not have, uh, didn't have the funds. So in order to help those other parents along, we actually developed a GoFundMe account. Uh, we had uh, to pay $854, and there was some question about disparity. I want to talk about a couple of disparities. One is a disparity in, in the pricing. If, if one of the things I've been doing for the last year or two, as we would go to games, talking to parents of other teams, ask them, one is your school recognizing this is an IHA sport, and what do you pay? Uh, a week ago, last Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe it was, we were at Naperville North High School, and my jaw dropped when I was talking to some of the parents there, and I told them that we paid $854, and their fee was $95 a player. And then I took photographs, and I can send them to, of the sidelines. They had 18 extra players on the sidelines. We had eight. Uh, we only lost 11 to 7. Uh, but what's happened last year and is happening this year through differing schedules, injuries, attrition, we're losing momentum because we don't have the fully competitive team we want. I think the other thing we might see is having an opportunity at the next meeting for this board to decide whether they want to follow a recommendation from one individual or if you want to vote on a special motion of your own to ask for full funding for the uh, equal treatment of, of all 204 athletes. Uh, my understanding is, is the, the fee itself has not changed amongst all the other schools, all the other sports in the last five or six years. Um, but we had a two-year pledge. Um, our, our concern also goes beyond the college, it goes into scholarships. I think you also should know that there are several players who are now playing at Oberlin University in Ohio who are scholarship players because of the opportunity to play in lacrosse. I think that, that speaks well beyond just what happens while they're in high school. But again, I want to thank you for your consideration and we're asking for, for it to be funded now rather than anything over a certain number of years. And I think the time is to do it now. Thanks. Thank you. We now move to our consent agenda and superintendent report. I'm going to begin with Dr. Sullivan. Okay, I'm going to mention something Sam mentioned when he was up here, but our last Young Hearts for Life screening is at Wabonzi Valley this Thursday, May 2nd, and there's still time to sign up to volunteer. I think we're still needing some volunteers, right, Jason? Yes? So again, we want to thank the Indian Prairie Educational Foundation for supporting this life-saving program for our students. Um, and you can find more information about Thursday screenings and how to volunteer on our website. Next week is Teacher Appreciation Week, May 6th through May 10th. And while I know we value and appreciate our teachers every day of the year, this is a special week to recognize our teachers um, for their incredible contributions. So we have a very talented staff here at Indian Prairie that deserve high accolades for what they do every day for our students. So um, I want to say thank you to the amazing teachers that we have here in the district. And I hope that all of you next week find time to thank a teacher. Okay. We have two administrative um, replacement positions tonight in the agenda, so I'm ready to go to those, Mike. Both are for assistant director positions for student services. So I'm going to ask Caitlin. I know Caitlin is here. So I'm going to have the first is Caitlin Druger. Did I do that right, Caitlin? All right, good. Caitlin comes to us from District U46, where she serves as a divisional of special education at Elgin High School currently. She's also been a student services coordinator and special education teacher with Joliet Public Schools. We look forward to welcoming Caitlin to Indian Prairie. I respectfully ask that you approve Caitlin Druger as Assistant Director of Student Services. So I do need a motion that we approve Caitlin as Assistant Director for Student Services. Make a motion that the Board of Education approve Caitlin Druger as Assistant Director of Student Services as presented. We have a motion, a second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Jackie, please call the roll. Mr. Rising? Aye. Ms. Donahue? Aye. Mr. Caruvas? Yes. Ms. Peel? Aye. 
Ms. Grover? Yes. Ms. Deming? Aye. Mr. Raysack? Aye. Motion passes. Welcome. No, I don't think so. Congratulations. Welcome. That isn't your um, your fan club there, is it? No. Next to you? No, but you have a nice little fan <laughs> little one back there. And I don't think Amy's here. Is that correct? Okay. So our next um, we have is Amy Galvin. Um, Amy comes to us from Rockford Public Schools, where she was most recently she most recently served as director of special education. She's been in Rockford in special education administrative roles since 2014. Um, Amy has eight years of experience as a special education teacher, and we look forward to welcoming Amy to um, Indian Prairie. So I respectfully ask for you to approve Amy Galvin as Assistant Director of Student Services. And I need a motion to approve Amy as Assistant Director. I'll move that the Board of Education approve Amy, Amy Galvin as Assistant Director of Student Services as presented. And do I have a second? Second. There is a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Jackie, call the roll. Ms. Peel? Aye. Ms. Deming? Aye. Ms. Grover? Yes. Mr. Raysack? Aye. Ms. Donahue? Aye. Mr. Rising? Aye. Mr. Carubas? Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. Anything else? Yep, that's it. That is it. So now we move to the consent agenda items. I need a motion to approve consent agenda items F through J. I move that the Board of Education approve consent agenda items F through J as presented. I have a motion, a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Jake, call the roll. Mr. Carubas? Yes. Mr. Rising? Yes. Mr. Razak? Aye. Ms. Peel? Aye. Ms. Deming? Aye. Ms. Grover? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Donahue? Aye. Motion passes with a couple uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like those. <laughs> Okay, and now we go to our discussion. Uh, the review of the results of your official canvassing of the returns from DuPage County Election Commission. Are you doing that? I am doing this. Thank you. So in, um, in, in your board documents, you'll see that we've received from the DuPage County Clerk uh, the correct copy of the canvas and abstracts of votes uh, cast at the consolidated general election that was held um, on Tuesday, April 2nd. Um, DuPage County is our principal county, so this canvas includes uh, votes made in both DuPage and Will County. Um, there's no action that needs to be taken on this, but we are supposed to review those results, so I'll go through them in ballot order. Uh, the results were um, Gotham G. B. Batia, 3,240 votes, Justin Carubas, 4,852 votes, Mark Rising, 5,804 votes. Natasha Grover, 5,915 votes, and Carol M. Jones, 4,377 votes. Um, the results of that canvas um, puts our top three as our um, returning board members, Justin Krubus, Mark Rising, and Natasha Grover. Thank you. And before moving to the approval of the President Pro Tem for our next short meeting, um, I have a few just information items. Last thing before I give up the chair here. <laughs> um, for the community, um, we submitted um, uh, requests for proposals um, to six nationwide superintendent search firms. Um, the due date to receive them was Friday. We received proposals from all six um, search firms. So now the board is in the process of reviewing the information on the search firms uh, with the hope 
of having a selection of the search firm by June 2nd. So I want to just make sure the community knows where we're at in the process. Um, and that's that. Uh, a reminder to all board members that the IASB, Illinois Association of School Board, um, looks for resolutions. Um, and that due date is in June, I think late June. I think some people are considering doing a resolution. I just want to make sure Dr. Sullivan provided us with a reminder. I just want to continue to remind us that if we're going to submit, we should get working on that. Um, I went to a LEND meeting on Friday, and my friend left, and I want to give him kudos. One of the highlights of the LEND meeting was to look at, which is the Legislative Education Network of DuPage. And that's a group of DuPage school districts who work for advocacy for schools throughout the state of Illinois. Now, you have to pay a fee to belong to LEND. And uh, several school districts thought it was time to relook at the fee structure. And uh, our friend there, Jay Strang, was one of the members who worked with other business managers in DuPage to relook at a fee structure, um, which will benefit actually District 204. So that will be voted upon at the May LEND meeting, uh, and then I'm sure will be presented to the board for our approval um, later on. But they did magnificent work that I think can be shared later, but we need to follow the process here. And finally, with Teacher Appreciation Week, I know on behalf of the entire board, we want to thank our teachers. I'm kind of passionate about this because that's what I decided to do when I grew up was to be a teacher. And uh, it continues to be a difficult profession, and it's getting tougher and tougher. Um, as we know, there are teacher shortages throughout the United States, clearly teacher shortages in the state of Illinois. And I guess I do have a plea, and Dr. Sullivan said it, thank a teacher next week. Believe it or not, <clears throat> in about my 38-year career, you get about three thank yous a year. And you think you would get more. And I know parents love their teachers. And they probably think somebody else is doing it. But guess what I'm telling you? They don't. And the highlight of my year was getting that thank you. It's serving kids, but that thank you is really, really important. So if you can find some time, and there's a lot of kids out here. So before you go, before you leave here, make sure that next week, pick two or three teachers. You didn't pick all of them, but pick two or three teachers and just go up to them and say thanks for what you do because you know they're really passionate about what they do and, and they want to serve you well. So please do that and parent community, please do that also. On behalf of the board, I want to thank all the teachers, teachers assistants, everybody who works with our kids. Um, we do appreciate what you do, so thank you. That was a good way to end. <laughs> <laughs> And now I have an action item. I need approval to appoint uh, President Pro Tem for the special organizational meeting until a new president is elected. And so do I have a motion to approve a President Pro Tem? I'll make a motion that the Board of Education approve the appointment of Kathy Peel as the President Pro Tem for the special organizational meeting until a new board president is elected as presented. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion about Kathy Peel's merits here? <laughs> <laughs> Since she out ten years all of us, yeah. <laughs> I guess we don't. <laughs> You've done the job before, haven't you? <laughs> Not as pro no. Well, I mean I guess maybe once. <laughs> Mr. Rising. Aye. 
Mr. Karubas? Yes. Ms. Grover? Yes. Ms. Deming? Aye. Ms. Peel? Aye. Ms. Donahue? Aye. Mr. Rasak? Aye. Motion passes. Oh, oh geez. Yeah. Really? Oh. In the midst of the motion. <laughs> Ocean passes. Got to switch chairs now. Too. You want to switch? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm going to take the camera, though. I okay. Just... <laughs> All right. So we're going to. Motion to adjourn? Oh, motion yeah. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Motion to adjourn the final meeting. Did you make that? Second. Yeah. I'll second. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay. And now we need to call the special organizational meeting to order at 7:41. And uh, Dr. Sullivan, you need to lead the reelected board members in the oath of office and indicate that all board members Ms. can participate. Does Ms. Horvath need a moment? Ms. Horvath is desperately trying to get to the next yes. meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's sorry. Take, a, take a pause there, speed racer. <laughs> more in slow mode. Okay. <laughs> I'm there. I am going to come up here and administer the oath of office to the newly elected members of the Board of Education, but current board members, it's kind of been a tradition that we would like you to reaffirm your oath to join us. I'm going to ask folks to stand who wish to do that. And you all have it in front of you, so you might want to hold on to that because it's, as, it as Justin has indicated on several times, it's quite long. <laughs> okay, so we'll start and uh, we'll have you repeat um, after me. I, state your name. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of member of the school board of Indian Prairie Community Unit School District 204 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois to the best of my ability. I further swear that I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. As part of the Board of Education, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education of every student in the school district. I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course for Indian Prairie District 204. I shall assist in establishing a structure and an environment designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement and all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community schools to advance the vision for Indian Prairie District 204. And I shall strive to work together with the district superintendent to lead the school district toward fulfilling the vision the board has created, fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. Now take a drink of water. Congratulations. Do you want my password? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to the oh, yeah. re-elected officials. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Jackie, will you do the roll call? <laughs> He forgets very quickly. <laughs> Mr. Karubas. <laughs> Here. 
Mr. Rasak? Here. Ms. Peel? Here. Mr. Rising? Here. Ms. Deming? Here. Ms. Grover? Here. Ms. Donahue? Here. There's no com public comment, okay? No, there was no one signed up for okay. special. Sorry. Okay, there was no public comment. Um, so now I am going to need nominations for president. Hmm. <laughs> I'm in for Michael Braysack to be president of the Indian Prairie School Board 204. Second. Second. Okay. Didn't Sorry. need a second, but that's okay. <laughs> So we've got Mike Grazak as a nomination for president. Um, where, where's my notes here? Any other nominations? Is, do we ask for any? Okay. Any I other nominations? Any Should we wait? How long do we want to wait? You just oh. do it three times. Any other nominations? <laughs> Hearing no other nominations. Okay. Can we do, do a roll call vote? That's Jackie. Can you do a roll call vote? Yep. It's on the name tag. Hmm. Sorry, just a second. Let me get here. <coughs> I have to make the machine do what I want it to here. Okay. Um, Miss Donahue. Aye. Ms. Deming? Aye. Sorry. Ms. Peel? Aye. Mr. Karubas? Yes. Mr. Rising? Aye. Ms. Grover? Yes. Mr. Rasak? Aye. Okay. The vote is in Good. favor, seven to zero, in favor of Mike Rasak. Um, by receiving a majority of the votes, Mike Rasak is elected president of the Board of Education. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the support. Um, I think anyone uh, on this board could serve as president. So it's a high honor to be recognized you to serve you. So thank you so much. So we'll move for the nominations are now in order for the office of vice president. Do I have someone who would like to nominate? someone for vice president. I'll nominate Justin Karubas for vice president. So Justin Karubas is nominated for vice president. Are there any other nominations for the office of vice president? Hearing no further nominations, the nominations for vice president are closed. So Justin Karubas being the only candidate nominated for the office of Vice President. Jackie, will you please call the roll? Ms. Peel? Aye. Mr. Rasak? Aye. Ms. Deming? Aye. Ms. Donahue? Aye. Ms. Grover? Yes. Mr. Rising? Aye. Mr. Karubas? Yes. So the vote is seven to zero in favor of Justin Karubas by receiving the majority of votes. Justin Karubas is elected vice president of the Board of Education. Congratulations, Mr. Thank Karubas. You, thank you. I look forward to supporting the president and him delegating a lot of responsibilities to his fellow board members. <laughs> I look forward to that too. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. You just, just. Thank you. So nominations are now in order for the office of secretary. Do we have a nomination for the office of secretary? I nominate Lori Donahue as secretary. So Lori Donahue is nominated. Are there any other nominations for the office of secretary? Hearing no further nominations, the nominations for the office of secretary is now closed. Lori Donahue being the only candidate nominated for the office of secretary. Jackie, will you please call the roll? Ms. Stemming? Aye. Mr. Karubas? Yes. Ms. Peel? Aye. Ms. Grover? Yes. Mr. Rising? Aye. Mr. Rasak? Aye. 
Ms. Donahue. Hi. The vote is seven to zero in favor of Lori Donahue by receiving a majority of votes. Lori Donahue is elected secretary of the Board of Education. Congratulations, Ms. Congratulations. Donahue. Thank you very much. Good stuff. So during this meeting, we also make an appointment, and I think I, get a, I need a motion and a second for this, and the appointment is for the Illinois Association of School Board Governing Board Representative. That person represents us at the Illinois Association of School Board meetings and helps us with our resolutions. Um, so do I have a motion to appoint a member of the school board to IASB's governing board representative. Make a motion for Mark Weising to be appointed to IASB school board um, as our school board representative. Second. I have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Jackie, please call the roll. Ms. Deming? Aye. Mr. Carubas? Yes. Mr. Raysack? Aye. Ms. Pio? Aye. Mr. Rising? Aye. Ms. Grover? Yes. Ms. Donahue? Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you. Um, next order of business is the op adopt the Illinois Association of School Boards Code of Conduct for members of school boards. Uh, traditionally, uh, as we reorganize, we always adopt the Illinois Association School Board's Code of Conduct. In addition to that <laughs> lengthy oath of office, um, we also have a code of conduct. And very briefly, I want to just, and it's available actually in our policy, which is 2 colon 8 0, but some highlights of E, which is an exhibit. Thank you. Um, some highlights of this is that school board members represent di district constituents honestly and equally and try uh, surrender their responsibilities to special interest or partisan political groups. Uh, school board members avoid any conflict of interest. School board members recognize that a school board member has no legal authority as an individual and decisions only can be made by a majority vote. School board members take no private actions that compromise the board or administration, and they respect confident confidentiality of privileged information. School board members abide by majority decisions. School board members respect the free expression of opinion in an uh, honest and open and respectful ma um, manner. School board members prepare, attend, and actively participate in school board meetings and be informed about them. Uh, school board members will respectfully listen to those who communicate with the board uh, and try to understand their views while recognizing their responsibility to represent the interest of the entire community. Uh, School board members model continuous learning through school board member development opportunities and school board members finally strive to keep the board focused on its primary work and that is clarifying the district pur purpose, direction and goals and monitoring district performance. So those are the highlights of the oath of conduct and the code of conduct. Do we have a motion and a second? So do, can I have a motion and a second to approve those? I'll make a motion that the Board of Education adopt the Illinois Association of School Boards Code of Conduct for members of school boards as presented. Second. So I have a motion and a second. Is there any other further discussion? Hearing none, Jackie, please call the roll. Mr. Rising? Aye. Mr. Carubas? Yes. Ms. Donahue? Aye. Ms. Deming? Aye. Ms. Peel? Aye. Ms. Grover? Aye. And Mr. Rasek? Aye. Motion passes. Finally, the board needs to approve the 2019-2020 school board meeting calendar. Do I have a motion? 
I move that the Board of Education approve the 2019 2020 school board meeting calendar as presented. Second. second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Has it been reviewed for Bears games? <laughs> it actually care? has. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in trouble. <laughs> Any other questions? Hearing none, Jackie, call the roll. Will the bears even be good? Mr. Carubas. Yes. Miss Peel? Aye. Miss Donahue? Aye. Mr. Razak? Aye. Mr. Rising? Aye. Miss Deming? Aye. Miss Grofer? Yes. Motion passes. Finally, I need a motion to reconvene into executive session. Make a motion to recon reconvene into executive session. Second. And do I have to call the roll for that? Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Jackie, call the roll. Yeah, hang on, I gotta find it here. Because <laughs> now we're all out of order. <laughs> okay, Mr. Rising. Aye. Ms. Peel. Aye. Mr. Rasak. Aye. Mr. Carubas. Yes. Ms. Deming. Aye. Ms. Grover. Yes. Ms. Donahue. Aye. Motion passes. Students and guests, the major part of the regular Board of Education meeting is now adjourned, and the board will go into executive session.